Um, hi everyone, I'm Lauren. My hair is insane today, sorry. It's just looking at it, it's awful. Um, anyway, I'm gonna read chapter five of Charlotte's Web. Hopefully I can get it into one video. Um, by now I'm sure we're all used to the chaos of the timed recordings, but regardless, we'll see how it goes. All right. The night seemed long. Wilbur's stomach was empty and his mind was full. And when your stomach is empty and your mind is full, it's always hard to sleep. A dozen times during the night, Wilbur woke and stared into the blackness, listening to the sounds and trying to figure out what time it was. A barn is never perfectly quiet. Even at midnight, there is usually something stirring. The first time he woke, he heard Templeton gnawing hole in the grain bin. Templeton's teeth scraped loudly against the wood and made quite a racket. That crazy rat, thought Wilbur, why does he have to stay up all night, grinding his clashers and destroying people's property? Why can't he go to sleep, like any decent animal? The second time Wilbur woke, he heard the goose turning on her nest and chuckling to herself. What time is it? whispered Wilbur to the goose. Probably obbly obbly about half past eleven, said the goose. Why aren't you asleep, Wilbur? Too many things in my mind, said the Wilbur. Well, said the goose, that's not my trouble. I have nothing at all in my mind, but I have too many things under my behind. Have you ever tried to sleep while sitting on eight eggs? No, replied Wilbur. I suppose it is uncomfortable. How long does it take a goose egg to hatch? Approximately, approximately thirty days, all told, answered the goose. But I cheat a little. On warm afternoons, I just pull a little straw over the eggs and go out for a walk. Wilbur yawned and went back to sleep. In his dreams, he heard again the voice saying, I'll be a friend to you. Go to sleep. You'll see me in the morning. About half an hour before dawn, Wilbur woke and listened. The barn was still dark. The sheep lay motionless. Even the goose was quiet. Overhead, on the main floor, nothing stirred. The cows were resting. The horses dozed. Templeton had quit work and gone off somewhere on an errand. The only sound was a slight scraping noise from the rooftop, where the weather vane swung back and forth. Wilbur loved the barn when it was like this. Calm and quiet, waiting for light. Day is almost here, he thought. Through a small wil sorry, <laughs> through a small window, a faint gleam appeared. One by one, the stars went out. Wilbur could see the goose a few feet away. She sat with her head tucked under a wing. Then he could see the sheep and the lambs. The sky lightened. Oh, beautiful day! It is here at last. Today I shall find my friend. Wilbur looked everywhere. He searched his pen thoroughly. He examined the window ledge, stared up at the ceiling, but he saw nothing new. Finally, he decided he would have to speak up. He hated to break the lovely stillness of dawn by using his voice, but he couldn't think of any other way to locate the mysterious new friend who was nowhere to be seen. So Wilbur cleared his throat. Attention, please, he said in a loud, firm voice. Will the party who addressed me at bedtime last night kindly make himself or herself known by giving an appropriate sign or signal? Wilbur paused and listened. All the other animals lifted their heads and stared at him. Wilbur blushed, but he was determined to get in touch with his unknown friend. Attention, please, he said. I will repeat the message. Will the party who addressed me at bedtime last night kindly speak up? Please tell me where you are, if you are my friend. The sheep looked at each other in disgust. Stop your nonsense, Wilbur, said the oldest sheep. If you have a new friend here, you are probably disturbing his rest, and the quickest way to spoil a friendship is to wake somebody up in the morning before he is ready. How can you be sure your friend is an early riser? I beg everyone's pardon, whispered Wilbur. I didn't mean to be objectionable. He lay down meekly in the manure, facing the door. He did not know it, but his friend was very near. And the old sheep was right. The friend was still asleep. Soon, Lurvy appeared with slops for breakfast. Wilbur rushed out, ate everything in a hurry, and licked the trough. The sheep moved down the lane. The gander waddled along behind them, pulling grass. And just then, just as Wilbur was settling down for his morning nap, he heard again the thin voice that had addressed him the night before. Salutations, said the voice. Wilbur jumped to his feet. Salu what? he cried. Salutations, repeated the voice. What are they and where are you? screamed Wilbur. Please, please tell me where you are. And what are salutations? Salutations are greetings, said the voice. When I say salutations, it's just my fancy way of saying hello or good morning. Actually, it's a silly expression. I'm surprised that I used it at all. As for my whereabouts, that's easy. Look up here in the corner of the doorway. Here I am. Look, I'm waving. At last, Wilbur saw the creature that had spoken. Okay, hold on. Let's see if that goes away. We're almost done. It'll be at a good uh, pausing point. Um, at last, Wilbur saw the creature that had spoken to him in such a kindly way. Stretched across the upper part of the doorway was a big spider web, and hanging from the top of the web, head down, was a large gray spider. All right, here is a picture of Wilbur looking at the spider web. Um, 
And with that, I'm going to uh, stop this video and I'll make a second once we can finish, unless it 